get up out of the element then what? I got a box I'm like a new Honda element I'm so heavy set but it's like the devil's my surrogate mother and I'm smothering niggas it's no more to some dreams are just dreams to others dreams are reality at least for Jennifer the Razor Barber they are Barbara takes an undefeated record of 6-0 to Ignacio, Colorado to catch a dream well waited for. But first, she must make weight. I feel like as a boxer, you don't work. This like your job is to make sure that, that the least you can do is come in on weight. I think that's like the most embarrassing thing you can do to yourself is not come on weight because you signed a contract to fight at that weight and the weight forces you. You can say if you want to fight at a different weight class. Contract weight is 121.1 quarter. Excuse me. 119.2. Along the ride, you guaranteed a few bumps. Despite being a local, Barbara's opponent, Adriana Delgado, was late for her way in. Right here. Right time. That kills me. That, that's a beat. Doesn't make any sense. After three hours of waiting, Delgado finally shows up. 119.6. After a blood pressure and weight, Barbara goes through a required boxing examination. And takes a few pictures for promotion. Okay, so this is the fight poster for the fight tomorrow. Uh, my name is right here, TBA. And her picture's on here, but it says former, not current. Former. She'll be listening tomorrow. We actually referred to me as Jessica. After taking care of business, Barbara takes a breather to eat with her coach and her parents, Vicky Graffius and Jean Barber, who were both deaf. Barbara received her degree in deaf studies at the Cal State University of Northridge to become closer with her parents and the deaf culture. At this venue, the hotel serves as the dressing room. Here, Barbara must prepare herself mentally for the battle. Trainer Stan Ward, aka Coach, goes over the game plan. Worry when the referee says break. Make sure that this is here. Here, here, here. If you think she's going to punch you, you jab it. Push her on the hand. Because usually when they punch, they punch from here. If she drops the hand, Use it. Something hit her on her arm from there. And her front hand. It'll keep her off balance. Keep her in stable. She gets her. She's getting ready to throw this hand. And you hit it. And it'll cause that to be off balance. 
This is your chance. This one. So now I'm 7 0, 4 knockouts, so I'm excited. Somebody from the audience threw in the towel, which I guess is her dad. So they, they didn't want to see it going anymore. So if I got stuff. It was absolutely like picture perfect. She had great hand speed, great jab, very good, strong tenacity. She stayed right on her. I thought it was absolutely one of her best fights I've ever seen her throw. We got a little payback since we're supposed to wait at 2 o'clock and she didn't get until. She didn't get here until 5.30 and she's close by. She's like from two and a half to three, and a half, three hours away and she got here at 5.30. So. Uh, Jenny is, is, a, is a now becoming a very seasoned pro. And by the grace of God, we do all we should do and we do the best that we can. We come out and take On the next episode of Around the Clock, watch Jennifer take on her next opponent for the NABF Feather.